Okay, let's see whether it works or not. Okay, cool. So it says that we are in the downloads. Okay, we can do LS. And you see, we can see all the files here. We can download, we can upload. And now what we can do, we want to, we want to actually cover our track, right? Okay, we want to see whether, let's say, for example, the person says, hey, Marcus, I try to download the file, but the problem is the file is not executing, it's exist exiting. So let's say if the person uploads this file in virus total, we are screwed, correct? So what we can do now, okay, what trick we can do now is we are going to cover, okay, we, we are going to cover our track. So how are we going to cover our track? Okay, how are we going to cover our track? Let's go to our clone website, our downloads, and this is our original file. Correct or not, guys? This is our original file. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to remove this file, which is setup.exe. Okay, this file, uh, just ignore this, guys, because that file, that file is uh, existing in the before this, before this, I did some experiments though, yeah. So just ignore that. So now we have the setup.exe, right? Let's remove all setup.exe. Not sure, remove setup.exe, ls, okay. And also at the moment, we can spawn into a shell also. We can get into a shell. And boom, we are in a shell. You guys might be, you guys might be familiar with this. This is a CMD process, correct or not? Okay. Correct. So I can I can just delete all files. I can upload. So now, guys, I'm going to delete everything. Okay, now, guys, the person might be thinking, hey, uh, what's the problem with my binary? I downloaded from the website. But the problem is the game is not actually executing. So uh, I think, guys, uh, Tusha, your mic is on. I'm getting ready for that. Madhun Sigaret, Happy birthday, my cute sister. What is that? Tushar? Okay, cool. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cover our tracks. We don't want them thinking that it's a fake binary or a shell. Making them, it's okay, it's okay. No problem. So we are going to cover our track. So the next time when they execute the binary, which is our installer, our real installer, they are going to install the game in their machine, making them happy and also at the same time not suspicious on our operation. So how are we going to do that? Easy. Let's not spawn uh, our shell. In Metaprater, it's easy to upload and download files. So what we can do, we just can upload a file. We can just use our directory clone website, downloads, and what's the file name? The file name, this is the original COD installer, correct or not, guys? <clears throat> this is the original uh, installer. So let's upload this. Okay, upload it. So now, let's say the, let's say, let's say the victim comes to his machine and say that, why not let's let's just try installing back again maybe it might it might work again because i restart my machine something like that so now when he when he runs and it works he has installed cod in his machine and this time we no need a shell because we are already inside his machine we are already inside his machine okay and we can actually spawn a process. We can we can start a process notepad. Let's say wait um let me let me check. We can spawn a process. Okay, maybe maybe we can do like something like uh, okay help. Let's get into a shell. Okay, shell, 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 shell. Okay, okay, okay. All right, cool. Okay, so now what we can do, we can just do, uh, I, I am watching 
Yo, this is this is technically what hackers do, right? Correct or not? No dot txt. But the thing is, in a real engagement, APT attackers at once persistent press. They don't allow. They don't want you to know that they are actually inside the system. Just imagine this is a banking system, and they want to target a financial institution. So they don't actually expose themselves. So this they, they don't actually do this. Usually people who do does this is usually like a spammers, scammers, and people who like to hack for fun, something like that. So something like that, I guess you guys can perform post exploitation. You guys can do whatever you want using this Metasploit framework. Can Metasploit create a persistent exploit? Yes, can. If you search for persistence here, if you search for persistence, Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Persistence, persistence, local persistence. Okay. So as you can see here, it says that Windows persistent registry startup payload. Okay. How long does it uh, be able to spawn our process? It is. It depends on what type of persistence you are installing. Whether it's a service, because service you can specify how long. It needs to call back. Maybe you can run the uh, malicious uh, payload for every five minutes, or you can run the malicious payload for every ten minutes, or every one year, or every one month, every three months. It depends on your need. Or you can run a registry that runs on startup. That means whenever the machine is booted up, it automatically connects to your Metasploit instance. So that's how you can do persistence using Metasploit as well. It's a really good tool. Okay. So pretty much it, guys. For the first day, I, I wanted you to introduce you guys to GoFish, and I wanted to introduce to you guys the basic of embedding malware, creating malware using Metasploit and stuff, and how to cover your tracks and stuff. Okay. So any questions, guys? Okay, that's a great, that's a good question because, yeah, but, but the thing is, it's called a Hackintosh where you, you install your own Mac OS uh, software. But the problem is where a Mac OS software is cracked, okay? And let's say that specific software requires Apple's uh, own hardware to, you see, Whenever Apple develops their own OS, it is meant to be run on an Apple machine. Because let's say if you have a gaming laptop, you have a highest performance. If you have a normal laptop, but it runs Windows, okay? But it doesn't mean that if a Windows lags on a normal computer, it doesn't mean that Windows is bad. It means that the laptop doesn't support the usage of Windows, okay? It is the same thing here. A Mac doesn't support, it only supports Mac's hardware. So if you use a Mac hardware, you can run Windows for just 2 GB of RAM or 4 GB of RAM because it's the hardware is a full hardware capacity. It's like a gaming laptop in short. And another thing is Mac OS, uh, the Hackintosh softwares are not actually updated. So you might be using an old version. And not every features are covered in it. Sometimes you might have errors. Sometimes it's not really useful, lah, if you ask me. That's the thing. Uh, how we can switch over our metal to the multiple victim? Okay, great. So can the victim see it in uh, services any process running suspicious? Great. Okay, two questions. Okay, first question, switch our metal metal shell, okay? When you run sessions dash H, you have a list of things you can do here. So one of the thing is listing. As you can see here, you have one session open. Correct or not? Okay. So, okay, let's let's run. Yes, exactly. So let's run a second session here. Maybe, maybe let's run a second session here. Okay, I'm going to download this. I'm going to... Yes, sessions in track. Okay, correct. 
so my jobs are empty so when you are going to interact with any session let's say this is session one you do sessions sessions dash i interact with number one interact with number two what if you want to change the name of our meta operator session so you can just put sessions that interact one and you can change the name also maybe you can see let's say let's say let's say and and okay and dash n and the name of our session will be john okay if you do a sessions listing now the name of our session is changed to john okay second question you guys asked okay let's interact with number one if you take a look at the processes okay our process might be under any of these processes okay but let's say let's say if if we are running under cmd.exe if you see here okay if you see here right we we have spawned cmd.exe so that's a problem if a person looks at cmd.exe they will be like i'm not running cmd but why cmd is running in in my machine so that's a problem that's a problem because it might be suspicious so what we can do okay what we can do next is okay let's get pid Okay, get PID is going to get the current process ID, okay, which is 3716. Let's search for 3716. Oh no, we are using run DLL32. It is very suspicious because why would we be running DLL on this machine? Correct or not? So what we can do, no worries. We can just jump to another process. How we are we going to jump to another process exactly? Migrate. Okay. So you see here, 664. Let's just migrate to a Chrome session. Okay. Migrate. That's H. Let's say just use it as a PID. Okay. Migrate to this. And the name will be Chrome. Let's say update. Chrome update. Okay. Not sure that will it work or stuff. Okay, so you can search based on the Chrome name or you can use the PID. Okay, or maybe you can just use this also. Or say Chrome. Uh, Chrome.exe. Okay, you migrate this. That's the thing. That's the problem. That's that's when that's when persistence comes in. Okay. So, for example, Explorer. Why Explorer is running? Because the victim has opened uh, IX Explorer or something. Explorer runs in background. So, you need to find a suitable process that runs. And that's when persistence comes in. You need to have persistence. If a, if a user closes the application, you need to be able to run the application. What if they delete our malicious file? And he... That's the thing. You, you need to be creative in exploiting the user. You can use registry, you can use services, or you can use, uh, let's say, like a background uh, process or something like that. Or maybe you can, maybe you can just, uh, uh, what is it? You can just uh, replace chrome.exe to your malicious chrome.exe. Maybe you can delete chrome and install a different application which is called Chrome. You can do that, or you can create a desktop link, which is a shortcut. You can create a shortcut. When you click the shortcut, it's going to call your shell, so the person might not know that you are you exist in the system. Something like that. So persistence is very important. So that why why so when we when we get the password of the system and the hash of the system, persistence doesn't actually work. Uh, the persistence doesn't help us a lot, but the password will be helping us after that. Let's say if the user kills our session, no worries. We can just use the password to get into the system. Easy. So, guys, that's a basic understanding of today's session. So, let me just show you an overview of what we are going to learn tomorrow, okay? So, for day two, okay, let me just run this. Okay, 
for day two, our learning objective is we are going to download and configure a custom PowerShell script, which I developed during an uh, engagement. So uh, multiple users, multiple uh, professionals have actually combined some PowerShell scripts here and there. So what I did for this engagement is I combined some functions here and there and created my own custom PowerShell script. So we will be using this to steal password. So this is where we are going to steal password from the user because we, we can't be leaving on persistence on a target for a long time. If antivirus flexes, they are, they are screwed. So we need to know the password. Next, we are going to do a file extension spoofing. So I'm going to show you how to make your malware to look like an Excel file, how to make your malware to look like a PDF file, but in reality, it's an executable. Okay, so we are going to do that. And finally, we are going to use GoFish. So for the three days course, we are still going to use GoFish to deliver our payload, okay, to make it realistic. So these are our, uh, our learning objective for tomorrow, okay. It's going to be really, it will be really interesting. And this will be useful for the third day because the same process, we are going to use it for building our command and control infrastructure, C2 framework, okay. So be prepared, guys. Uh, maybe tomorrow the session might be a bit longer. Uh, the timing is the same. It's 12.30 uh, if not mistaken, uh, as today. Same as today, right? Okay. So it's a two-hour session today. Maybe tomorrow it might take a bit longer time. Maybe two hours or maybe it can go two hours. Okay. It depends on how fast the module. So don't worry. Make you guys, make your time free and we can actually discuss and also try to make you guys understand about the process, okay? So any other final questions, guys? Yeah, my WhatsApp number is in, in the group, actually. So I'll, I'll give you guys later, okay? So timing is the same as today, okay? Any other uh, final questions, guys, before we end the session for today? I'll pass it to the host. Any other final questions? Okay, I think no one has any questions. So we can end the session for today. I'll catch you guys uh, tomorrow. Okay, have a great day. Okay. All right, uh, I'm passing to the host. Thank you, sir, for the lovely yeah. session. Okay, so the OSCP session, the OSCP journey things and everything i will be covering in the final day day three so after building the infrastructure and everything i'll be discussing that as well okay so stay tuned stay tuned and hope you guys enjoyed my session linkedin request okay yeah sure sure i'll accept your request thank you guys see you guys tomorrow really really look